Now it's time for the real thing, the special relativity. Let's get into it. So first of all, it's all about Einstein. That's why I put this one right here. Ha ha ha. Uh, you need to know these two postulates of Einstein's special relativity. You need to know these. Okay, so this is for an exam. You definitely need to know these. So first of all, you need to know the first one, that the speed of light is constant in all inertial reference frames. And remember again what inertial reference frame means? It means it's not accelerating. Now you might think, hey, the speed of light is constant. Yeah, yeah, so what? But actually, this is really weird. If you really think about it carefully. Now, let's think about non-relativity, first of all. Let's say I'm driving in my car and I'm going you know, this way, for example, at 10 kilometers per hour. And coming towards me is another car at 10 kilometers per hour coming towards me. My closure speed, in other words, you know, if I'm sitting in my car, I'm going to think that other car is coming at me at 10 plus 10, in other words, 20 kilometers per hour. However, Let's say I'm driving in my magical car, and my car is going the speed of light. If I'm going the speed of light, you know, in one direction, and someone else is coming towards me at the speed of light, my closure speed is not going to be twice the speed of light. The limit is going to be the speed of light once. In other words, it can only be C at maximum. So that's kind of wacky. You're going to see it ends up having some really weird uh, consequences, and it's awesome. Now, the second one, of course, just that the laws of physics need to be the same in all inertial reference frames. In other words, if you're not accelerating, then all of physics just works. Everything else is fine. In other words, if you're sitting in your airplane or in your train or in your magical spaceship, as long as you're not accelerating, which that's what it says here in both cases, that means physics is the same. You can throw a ball in your plane or in your train or in your spaceship. Everything will be fine. Now, why do we call it special relativity? Just so you know. Uh, well, inertial frames uh, are non-accelerating, so that makes things much easier. Einstein's special relativity didn't take him that long at all to figure out, whereas by contrast, general relativity took him years and years and years to figure out because that works for non-inertial frames. So in other words, that helps to explain, I mean, all sorts of crazy things came from that, like curvature of space-time, black holes and wormholes and weird stuff. But we're not going to get into that. We're just going to stick with the quote-unquote easier one. Is still really wacky though. And it all comes from just a simple idea. So we're going to see this number show up a lot. So it's actually, uh, we're just going to use a symbol for it, a Greek symbol for it called this gamma right here. This is the Lorentz factor. This is going to show up a lot in relativity. So because of that, you know, we get tired of always writing all the square roots everywhere. So we just include this. So what is this Lorentz factor? Well, it goes like this. It's one over, oops, I'll just make it uh, clearer here. One over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And keep in mind, we often write the speed as a multiple of c. So this here is c is the speed of light, in a vacuum that is, so it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, because if it wasn't in a vacuum, if it's like in glass, then it's a different, but we'll assume everything's going through space. And v is just your speed with respect to the stationary observer, and we often have the speed as a multiple of c. So for example, we might say, hey, you're going 0.9 c. That's a common you know, thing to say. So that means you're going 90% the speed of light, and so on. So let's look at this Lorentz factor in a little bit deeper here. So look at this graph, and let's look at what we can do with it. So if I take, for example, uh, the two extreme examples here. So what if I take v equals 0, for example, so way over here? What happens? If I make this here 0, well then 0 over c squared is just going to still be 0. 1 minus 0 is still 1. Square root of 1 is 1, so 1 over 1 is just 1. Hey, that's why at v equals 0, Lorentz factor is 1. Okay, what if I make this v value equal to c? In other words, I say, hey, what if you're traveling at the speed of light? If you put a c here, well, then c squared over c squared is just 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. That means uh, 1 over 0, though, well, square root of 0 is still 0. Um, 1 over 0 is infinity. So that's why it kind of breaks down right here. There's this asymptote right here. So as v approaches, as your speed approaches the speed of light, then this Lorentz factor goes to infinity and things get really weird. But, you know, that's why we say something can't go the speed of light. It can go really, really close to it. So you can go maybe 0.99c. All right, fine. Then you have a Lorentz factor. You can calculate it and you can do stuff with it. Okay, so let's look at these actual Lorentz transformations. I put this one here from Star Trek <laughs> Next Generation. <laughs> My book on clocks finally arrived. It's about time. Uh, that's because we've got clocks at times here. So this one here, we have a clock in frame S, and we have a clock that's in the moving frame S primed. And those are synchronized, so when T primed equals T equals zero, that's when those two frames, you know, are actually coinciding. But then, you know, things happen. 
Now, people uh, in both those different frames, they'll agree on the measurements of y and z. So if we think about uh, three dimensions, but they won't agree on x or t. Those will be different. So the first equation from your data booklet goes like this. It goes x primed equals gamma times x minus v t. And this is in your data booklet, so you don't have to memorize. So the next one's about time, and it goes like this. So it's still got a gamma right here, but this time it goes t minus vx over c squared. Okay, so let's look at all your different variables here going on. It gets a little bit complicated, but remember, primes mean moving frames. So the position measured in your moving frame, hey, that must be a prime, and position, that must be x primed. Lorentz factor, that's your good old buddy we just learned about, so that's gamma. What about your position measured in the stationary frame? That must just be x. All right, what about the speed of your moving frame? That's actually what we just call v. That's just how fast your train is moving or whatever. Um, then we have the time measured in the stationary frame. That'll just be t. And the time measured in the moving frame. Ooh, moving things are with a prime. That's why this has a t primed. So do you see how once you kind of learn about the moving frame being with primes, it's not so bad. Although these equations look a little bit scary, you don't have to memorize them, you're good. And just to reiterate, you know, what's moving and what's stationary, it depends on your observer. And you can be on a train, so you think you're stationary, it looks like the outside is zipping along by you, it's just fine. So we've also got a transformation for velocity, and it goes like this. So it goes u primed equals u minus v over one minus uv over c squared. And again, that's in your data booklet, so yay. So what does everything mean here? Well, let's see. Velocity of the object measured in S primed, that must then be U primed. The velocity of the object measured in S, that's just going to be U. That's how fast you think it's going if you're standing still with respect to this train or whatever. And the speed of the moving frame is a V. So do you notice we're trying to be consistent here with these different variables? Although, again, these equations look kind of wacky, as long as you keep your variables in check, you're going to be just fine. So let's do an example here. So we'll have spaceships A and B. That's why I put this from a Lego movie. Spaceship! They're, mo they're uh, moving towards each other as measured by an observer on Earth. So the person on Earth is sitting here watching this. And the person on Earth thinks that ship A here goes 0.7c to the right, in other words, 70% the speed of light to the right. And they see ship B go 70% the speed of light to the left. Now, the normal conventions, you know, we normally say things going to the right are positive, left are negative, so I assigned a negative here. And the question is then, if you're sitting in ship B, how fast is A approaching you relative to you? In other words, how fast do you think A is approaching you? Now, if you didn't think about relativity, if you didn't take into account, you would think, oh, the closure speed is just twice the speed. In other words, it's just 0.7 plus 0.7. In other words, I should see them coming towards me at 1.4 the speed of light. But that's not what it is. So we're going to see how to do this. First of all, we need to uh, think about which equation to use. It's going to be the velocity transformation equation. So I'm going to write that one down, and it goes like this. It goes u primed equals u minus v over 1 minus uv over c squared. So remember what these different variables mean here. So u is going to be the speed of the a here relative, uh, relative to earth. So that's why it's just u like this is going to be that number. Um, v is the speed of your moving frame. So that's why this one here is going to be 0 0.7, well, minus 0 0.7, that is. And u primed, that's going to be the speed of this other object as measured by me. So in other words, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So the hardest part, I think, was just figuring out that, hey, we want u primed. And we're going to write down, don't forget that u equals 0.7c. We've got uh, v equals minus 0.7c. That's going to be the important thing right here. So again, once you know this, it's pretty easy. But I think this is the hard part of these questions, is sort of racking your brain to figure out which one is what. Once you have this right here figured out, then the rest is just math, but let's make sure we do it. So we're looking for u primed, so let's go ahead and solve for u primed. Luckily, we don't have to do any rearranging. Away we go. So u primed is going to be equal to, let's see, it's u minus v, so that's going to be 0.7c minus v, which is minus 0.7c. That'll be interesting. All that over 1 minus, and we have 0.7c times negative 
0.7c, all that over c squared. All right, let's keep going then. What happens? We've got 0.7c plus 0.7c, so that's 1.4c. All that over 1, and let's see, a minus times a minus is a plus. So I've got 1 plus, and 7 times 7 is 49, so I've got 0 0.49. I got c squared over c squared. Notice then the c squareds cancel out. That's actually why these equations are the way they are, because as long as you have your speeds in terms of c, then they tend to cancel out, which is really nice. So then I end up with just that u primed is going to be equal to, let's see, it's 1.4c over 1 plus 0.49, which is just 1.49. So I've just got to do, hey, what's 1.4 over 1.49? I'll do that on my calculator. Okay, so what's 1.4 over 1.49? I get a number of 0.939597. So I've got this number here, 9395, whatever, times C. So if I'm going to write this to, let's see, I've got two significant figures here, two significant figures here, so that means I'm going to say my final answer as two significant figures. So it's going to be 0. Point, we'll say 9, and this number here will round up, so it'll be a 4. So that means there's my final answer here. And what this really means, what's the meaning of this? It tells me that, hey, if I'm sitting in ship B, I'm going to see ship A coming towards me at 0.94, the speed of light. Do you notice I haven't broken the speed of light limit that nothing is allowed to go faster than the speed of light. Isn't that cool?